Hi everybody, this is Lisa Gottfried. Um, I'm coming to you from New Technology High School in Napa, California in the United States. I'm really excited to be here. I wanted to thank 100.org for including New Tech High in, um, in the process of uh, leading edge innovative uh, thinking that happens in education. Today, uh, I have with me three students in the room, and you'll get to meet them. Um, they're going to showcase their blog portfolios. So we're talking about portfolios, digital portfolios in a new way. So um, just a little bit of information about New Technology High School and, um, and about me. Um, new Technology High School has been around for 21 years. We were the first uh, school to implement PBL learning, project-based learning, uh, in the classroom, which was really exciting. We, we were sort of born at the same time that the Buck Institute was um, beginning its first endeavors into PBL as well. And it's been an amazing 21 years. We've learned a lot along the way. And uh, it's really exciting to uh, be able to connect with all of you innovators across the, the globe and to hear some of the amazing things that you're doing and to be able to share what we're doing here in Napa. Um, just to give you a sense of how we fit in the picture, we, um, because we were the first PBL school, out of that grew an organization called New Tech Network, which um, was basically born from the idea that uh, what we're doing, I'm just reading, hi Lisa, thank you so much for talking to us today. Hi Frederica. Um, <laughs> I've got my uh, phone turned sideways, so if I go like this to read the notes, it's because I'm reading what you're talking about. Um, so, new so out of New Tech High came the New Tech Network, which is an organization that um, really was around to support spreading the idea of project-based learning across the United States. So as of today, there are over 200 project-based learning schools um, in the New Tech Network. Those are all most, I believe most of those are public schools around the United States and um, it's really exciting to see that network grow. We also are kind of unusual here at New Tech High because not only are we teaching high schoolers here on campus, but we also have a center for excellence where we train teachers from around the globe um, on how to effectively implement project-based learning. So um, at any given time on campus, actually embedded in our school, in the very heart of our school, is the training center. And we'll get educators from all over the United States and all over the world. I think the, the last couple trainings that I was invited to, we had some educators from Malaysia. We've had people from Korea, um, Ireland, you name it, Japan, all over the world. So we're already really well connected with the international community and really excited to be able to share what we've learned over the last 20 years. But today we're going to talk about what we've learned over the last two years in working with our blog portfolios. So um, I have some notes here I'm just going to keep looking at just in case I forget the really important stuff. So about two and a half years ago, we, we actually used to require that students, uh, oh, and just to give you a sense of who I am, I'm in my fifth year of teaching at New Tech High uh, as the digital media teacher or digital arts teacher. So I teach videography and game design and um, basic digital design. So about two and a half years ago, we decided that we were going to update our portfolio process. So we've always required that students create a digital portfolio of some um, sort. Hi Shri! Um, and uh, it's always been like a static website that showcases the work that students have done over the four years that they've been at New Tech. But we've decided that a couple of years ago that we really needed to update it and add a social media uh, component to it or blogging component to it and to give a little more flexibility to students who were um, uh, complaining that it was just nothing but a, a hoop to jump through and it wasn't a really usable thing for them when they got out of high school. So we put together a team that worked for about six months. It was a committee of about 10 to 12 students, two staff people. We had about eight core students that were there uh, every week meeting. And uh, we went through the design thinking process of how we can improve our portfolio 
uh, and what we came up with was the blog portfolio. So um, we wanted students to be able to create a more uh, authentic digital footprint that, that they could really use to launch into their adult life and uh, really work on their digital presence. So we launched our blog portfolio, uh, we had a soft launch a couple of years ago, and then um, we did our hard launch uh, last year. So we're in really our second year of the program and we're going to kind of share what we've been learning and how we're still deepening and our practice of blogging, but uh, you'll get to see some of the student work and what we hope will happen with this. And of course, you can always go on to 100.org and read a little more and see the toolkit that's online that we've created for you so that if you're curious at all about how to implement this, you can get a hold of me, um, happy to help you in any way possible. So uh, let's see, before we meet the students, let's talk a little bit about the three goals of what we were hoping to accomplish with blogs. And I have behind me, don't know if it's backwards or not, I'm hoping here, let me switch the camera here. Okay, so you'll have to bear with us. We were supposed to be in a conference room and we got moved to a smaller room here. So um, I created this infographic. I created this infographic that um, talks about what blogs are about, and there's three main goals here. So the first goal is about documenting learning. So uh, students are talking about what they did, they're uh, taking as-you-go pictures and screen captures, they're showing their process, and uh, you can often use that for case studies. And then the, the second uh, goal that we have is that students reflect on what they've learned and studies show that when students actually get the chance, when some kind of reflection is built into their project, that the learning sticks for much longer and it's much deeper. So we want students to really think about what did, what did they think about what they did? Can they summarize it? Can they talk about the obstacles that they had to overcome um, and how they overcame them? Can they pat themselves on the back? and really think about like what they could apply in their next project based on what they've learned from this project. So it's a very process-oriented goal. And then the last goal that we have is that uh, students be able to teach what they've learned. So uh, ultimately, if you can teach somebody else what you've learned, then of course you're gonna cement that in your own mind even stronger. So it's an opportunity to um, display step-by-step -step thinking, to practice their procedural thinking, and um, to create a follow-along tutorial so that other people can actually learn from what they have learned. And in that way, um, they're really uh, cementing their own learning, but they're also creating uh, resources for other learners to go and read later on if they also want to learn that thing that uh, that particular learner has, has just completed. And then the other piece to this, uh, there's some other things here about like understanding your audience and who you're talking to, um, that you really we apply some visual thinking. Um, and then the, the hidden piece that we're gonna talk a little bit about today and hopefully you guys will help us out here with this, is making community connections. So, um, there's a variety of things happening there. It's um, showcasing work so that students can get internships. Um, Caesar is gonna share a little bit about how he used his blog in that particular way and how he's continuing to use it. And then um, also sharing with your family, like what am I learning at school? There are definitely students who are really excited to show their family what it is that they're doing. And then um, really breaking down the walls of, of the classroom and opening it up to other uh, other people to comment and engage and um, somehow interact with the student outside of the classroom in really cool and online ways. Okay, so let me just make sure here. Okay, so we've talked about connections. Students can use, okay, we're talking about helping students to find internships. So in some cases where a student is applying for an internship, they might share their blog with the potential uh, intern or the potential employer. And in some cases have really 
valuable conversations with the employer about like how to clean up their portfolio and make it look more appropriate for the industry that they're trying to get an internship or a job in. So um, let's see here. Okay. So uh, the three uh, students that I have, I'm going to take this off the tripod here. We're really going rogue here. Okay. So I wanted to introduce, we've got Finn, who is a 10th grader, and um, Finn is, he can tell you a little bit more about his story, but he's, I try to get a variety of learning um, personalities, and Finn's definitely his own personality, he's a divergent thinker. We were talking about how he was ready to give up on school, and um, he found something that he was really interested in with digital media and physics and he's been documenting what he's doing with skating and video on his blog, so we're gonna take a look at that. And then we have Avery, she's also in 10th grade, so in her second year of high school, and she's using her portfolio, and she'll show you a little bit about how she's using it to showcase not only her academic work, but also her artwork, which is really kinda of cool. And then we have Caesar, who is a senior, and he's about to go off to college, so he's really using his blog to sort of prepare for the things that he thinks he's gonna be interested in um, as he goes out into the adult world and off into college. So, um, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Finn and I'm gonna walk around here. Sorry for the shaky camera, but we're trying to just make it a little more interactive here. And I'm gonna come around here and put this back on the tripod. Oh, tiny space. And we're gonna look over Finn's shoulder and I might just interview or ask some questions of Finn as he sort of shows you his portfolio. So let me make sure that you can see it. Screen sharing is not that great with Facebook Live, so we're trying to just move the actual phone camera on it. Okay, so here we are and we've got... Um, my name is Finn, as you already know. Um, here's my blog where I'm showcasing where I'm working on my latest project, which is a music video for a local artist in Napa and old friend of mine. And here I've basically run through all the different effects I've done, uh, talking step-by-step -step ways you can use them, what they do, how to use them, so anyone who wants to can learn them and then I can show how uh, my process through it and my experience going, going through, one, making a music video and two, learning all the new effects myself. And then the more you go down, there's more on me learning, here's me first learning certain effects that I ended up using in the music video that were extremely helpful. Um, trying to shout out for anyone who's looking for the same type of things I'm looking for. And then a little while ago I did a, let's see, I think the first blog post is right, right here. So basically we have like a running blog post for an individual project. We're talking about personalized learning and how do you document that and how do you prove your learning and it's turned out for Finn that it's been really important that at critical points in your project, right, that we've, you sat down and said, okay, let me write out what I've learned so far and I can teach other people what I've learned, right? Exactly. How do you feel about writing in general? Um. I, I do like writing, but sometimes it, I don't know, just sitting down and doing one thing, I can't always get, um, f sometimes it's hard to get the creative flow going, but most of the time I enjoy writing, if, especially if it's something that I want to write about. Not always if it's um, a topic that I'm given, but um, with... So how's it been writing? With, with Weebly and the <laughs> things that you've been giving me obviously are very much in my interest, so I really enjoy it. I don't really know who I'm posting to quite yet, but I like the idea <clears throat> that we're going with, and I feel like it's really good because everything that I've learned and all of my experience is on these blog posts, so anyone can look and read and see basically my exact experience and learn from that, which I feel like it's good to learn from other people's personal experiences. So remember, we, we had this conversation about, um, we posted your blog to my Twitter account, right? And then you got like 150 people or so looking at yeah. your website, which open like I saw your eyes like light up like oh now I get it I'm not writing for you <laughs> I'm actually writing for a real audience. 
Do you remember the connection that you made at that point? You were like, oh, I have my own Instagram account. Yeah, and I basically all... realized... Tell me about that. I basically realized that what I had been doing at home on the side, making small skate edits and uploading them to Instagram, was essentially the same thing that I was doing on my Weebly, except since I associated it with school, I figured it was only for my teachers and not for anyone else. So the big realization is that this is almost a better way of doing what I was doing. And then you already had a tribe of people that were following you on your skateboarding. Yeah, I had, I had a decent amount of people that um, at least influenced what my next steps were as far as editing, and I would take suggest suggestions and whatnot. And so um, did it change the way that you think about like how you're writing, knowing that you actually are going to write for some skateboarder people or people who are interested in skateboarding? Um honest honestly, I haven't I haven't really I haven't really thought as mm, I don't know. Huh. Actually. But <laughs> little, 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 little stump me there, Miss Godfrey. <laughs> but um I don't know, I plan I plan to basically just go about the the way I'm going, but as far as the more people start looking and giving me feedback, that'll kinda of shape where I start heading as far as new blog posts and my next projects. And, and can you talk a little bit about like what's in your blog post? Because you've got more than just writing in there. What else are you using? Um, I have, I uploaded a couple of videos to YouTube, so there's some- Can you play one? Let's just see what Content here, yeah. So here's something from the old, or my last project. Which essentially was me learning how to um, use most of After Effects and use just the brush tool and editing frame by frame, which is a very long and tedious process. But on top of that, use something like skateboarding and find the math and physics of it and find a way to display that in a fun little video. Cool. Which was essentially. So what, what we, we were talking right here. about like how do we capitalize on what Finn's really really loves and work with other teachers so we like who else and what other classes could we pull in some of the content so we found that the physics teacher was really interested in letting him just go and do his thing as long as he could prove that he understood the topic and uh, could meet the standards in his own way which is extremely personalized learning that it was cool with the teacher so um, he experimented with that a little bit and he worked with his physics teacher as well as in my digital media class to show the math and the physics behind the skateboarding that he's really interested in. It's cool. So can you talk a little bit really quickly before we move on to Avery about um, like how you felt about school? How do you feel about school now that we've been doing this? Um, I've, I've always um, kind of not been one who's always down for traditional learning and I feel like a lot of the a lot of teachers just kind of give out information have t kids just regurgitate it and spit the same information back up and I'm personally uh, like a phys like I want to like be doing something while I'm learning I'm definitely like an on hands like learner so for this when I'm going out and filming and then I'm skating I'm I'm moving my body and I'm learning in the moment and I'm learning how to manipulate the laws of physics with a skateboard and then present that on top of it. So I definitely with, I just, just being in your class and then with um, showcasing what I'm learning on Weebly, I feel like I'm with that style of learning that I've been going with, I'm able to learn in the moment in a way that I like that's not trapped inside a small classroom. It's out wherever I wanna be. And you could still prove it. You could show. Yes, exactly. Like, and that's hey, the best part work. is I even because I've learned in the way that I'm more comfortable in. I know it a lot better, and I can basically lay down whatever. I, I'm. I usually can answer any question about anything I've learned so far. Awesome. Thank you. So um, we're gonna do a little experiment here, and if you could, if you're interested, go on to Finnegan Hop Dash N T H S dot weebly.com that's an m on the end there so here it is again finnegan f-y-n-n-a-g-a-n-h-o-p-p dash n-t-h-s which is new tech high school dot weebly.com 
and go comment on some of his blogs. That would be my ask of, of this uh, innovative community. Go look at what he's got there and go ask him questions and we'll, we'll have a little experiment to see like, because the whole point is that he's not writing this to please me, although he is to meet standards that we are responsible for teaching him. But on the other hand, um, we really want to make connections with students out in the real world and you guys would be a great uh, place to start. So let, if you're interested, te let's test it out and go to his website and just comment. Give him some good comments. Okay, we're going to move on to Avery here. I apologize for the mess behind here. We weren't planning on filming in this room. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, go ahead Avery, you introduce yourself. I'm Avery. Um, I really enjoy art and photography and school, weirdly. <laughs> it's not weird. <laughs> So, um, can you, first let's look a little bit at your blog, right? So, tell us a little bit about like what you've, can you give us like a, a short tour of mm -hmm. some of the things that are on here? Here is the blog page where most of my blogs for school and my classes are. So, this was for game design and creating the first draft of the artwork for the cards and the logo. Here is a blog post I had to do for English. Um, here is my reflecting on my progress in my writing, and another digital design where we had to make a countdown clock for Festival Napa Valley. And then over here we have my art and my photography. And can you talk a little bit about, like, I didn't ask uh, you to put a tab there for your art or your mm -hmm. photography. Can you talk a little bit about, like, maybe the flexibility of what we can do with blogs for um, people who want to do special? We can show, you can easily add a tab to where you can actually showcase your photography. And that's what I did because I wanted to have a place on the... Uh, web where it was and then I also had an art tab because I also really wanted to showcase this and yeah and uh, we did a little test last week right remember so go back to your um, yeah this one so she wrote a blog about um, she's working on a card game that they're developing in in game design class so it was really well written and it had really good graphics in it that sort of talked about her process. So I tweeted that out on my Twitter account and I used some hashtags that I thought other people, like I used hashtag game design and another game design company retweeted her blog post and how many, how many visitors did we wind up getting? Um, I believe it was 148. In like two days, right? In one day. In one day. And then what, again, like what was the realization for you now that you knew there were a bunch of adults going to your <laughs> to your blog? What, um, what changed for you? Were you like, oh my gosh, I better get my work up there? Yeah, I, kind, I wanted to showcase more of my work. I wanted to check some of my grammar. Um, right. <laughs> right. Uh, just things like that and right. clean it up a little bit. Right, so I think it, it becomes a more authentic writing piece um, when you know you have a real audience for it. There are some questions about like, remember, so did I, I ask permission first before mm -hmm. I shared your yeah. post because it has her name on it and we want to make sure that kids stay safe on the internet and so um, I always ask permission first before I share stuff like that. Yes. Um, is there anything else on your blog that you want to share? What are, let's look at the tabs here. So we've got, so your tabs are up here. So blog. the the homepage is always the the running blog, and then um, she has her personal stuff under a portfolio, and then there's an about page where we have students really write a clear um, message about who they are, what what they're passionate about, um, where they're hoping to go in the future. So it's really about getting clear about how you create a um, digital footprint for yourself in a manner that's really um, 
Frederica says, amazing work, Avery. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, let's see. And then I have my resume. And then there's a resume there. So that when they go out to look for jobs, they already have all of this stuff online. So when they apply for internships and things like that, all they have to do is give them a link to their work, which is very different than having a digital portfolio that no one looks at. So, um, and truthfully, in the... Uh, Pukrad says, can we share these blogs too? Of course. Yes, please share. We, it would be a great experiment to see how many views we can get. And we actually can look on the back end of the websites to see how many people go to um, the sites. And so it'd be interesting to see if we get a big spike after you share this with other people. So let me, Avery's, Avery, uh, that's a D dropping. So it's A-V-E-R-I. D-R-O-P-P-I-N-G dot Weebly dot com. And you'll notice we keep the um, we keep the URLs pretty similar. It's just first and last name of the student dot Weebly dot com. Unless um, the the um, name has been taken already and then we put dot eight, uh, dash N-T-H-S after their name. So that we, we always know how to get at people's blog posts, right? Is there anything else that you think you want to share about this process or like how do you think you're going to use this in the next couple of years here at New Tech? Um, now that you know a little more about it. I definitely want to, to put more of my artwork on and explore different types of blogging and then I'll probably definitely use this for getting internships and jobs. Yeah, she's got really professional quality work. Uh, in terms of her graphic design stuff, that she could easily go and work, at, you know, anywhere in a graphic design place. <laughs> She's already got her portfolio together, which is awesome. What I was going to say is that, uh, at least in the United States, when you apply for jobs these days, um, it is really uh, that you apply online, and then they always ask for a URL for your portfolio or for your resume. So um, in this case they will be one step ahead of a lot of adults out in the real world. A couple steps. A couple steps. <laughs> this is Caesar. Hi, Hi Caesar. My, my name is Caesar. I am a senior here at New Technology High School. Um, next year I will be attending Wesleyan University, so oh. if you look at this, I'm going to be flying all the way across the country uh -huh. over there, and I'm going to be taking myself and my portfolio and my personality all the way to... To Connecticut. That, that part of the... Yep. That part of the U.S. So let's start with my portfolio. My portfolio, I started it with my about page. This is me. This is what I do. And I didn't center it around my professional life too, too much because I, have a, I am a person. I have myself. Um, I like to have fun. So I, show, I showcase that too. Showcase having fun while uh, doing my work. So here I have a testimonial, what it's about me, who I am, what my goals are what type of person I am and this is mostly for employers when they look at what um, who I am as a person if in case they want to hire me and to see if I'm a good fit for the company that they're hiring me for so I have who I am my goals in life which basically I want to become a, a professional a doctor um, something along in that field below that I also have my involvement what I'm part of what I've done along with the awards that I've received over the four years that I've been at New Tech. That's a lot of awards there, Caesar. It's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my About Me page. This is what I always link um, to my resume because my resume and my blog are pretty much connected because I feel like one sheet of paper isn't enough to tell the employers who I am. And so I have my resume here. But if you look at the top, I also have my blog, and it's linked to my About Me page. So now they have access to my About Me page. Now they have access to my portfolio and what I do and what who I am as a student. So two years ago, I was part of the the soft launch that uh, Ms. Garfrey was talking about where, yes, we started the, the blog cycle, the, the blog um, process. And I started with a basic tutorial on Illustrator, how to create a flower and... Um, you can see how, I guess, structured it is because of the paragraph and the picture style. But as two years in the future, as time Yeah, passed, you sort of got in your legs. You kind of figured out what a blog's for and how you could use it, right? I started, like, uh, knowing, like... Right, you can see the difference. You're much more visual. Yeah. 
because I figured that a lot of people probably might not be wanting to read stuff and they're more of a visual mm -hmm. and so they could just scroll and see like what I do as um, in pictures and there's a couple words in there too but um, the main difference from two years ago and now is that I had the opportunity to complete an internship at Kaiser Permanente which is I guess um, the world's one of the world leaders in healthcare like providers and I wrote um, I made a blog page about that so here's my Kaiser Permanente internship and that's page. a separate tab all that you created yes, outside of your regular tab. blog okay cool. and below that I have subsets which I'll show you in a little bit so here's the overview page this is what I experienced in those two weeks and those two months that I was at Kaiser um, I got to meet with doctors I got recognized, I got to make a speech, and you know, I got to go to the fair with two, three, four friends that I made at the experience. So I wrote about that, and the reason that I wrote about that is so uh, my friends, my families, my employers can look at it in the future. And my family too, because um, I get home around 8 p.m. every day. My parents pretty much never see me, and I'm going <laughs> to leave next year for the, for four years, and again, they're not going to see what I do. So when I'm in college, I'm gonna keep updating this blog post and I'm gonna keep sharing it with my parents so they know what I'm doing, so they know um, that I'm doing a good job, they can keep me accountable, and that's awesome. They might feel proud. So, question uh, Pukraj had a question about um, do any of you guys video blog? Do you ever record yourself just talking? Mm -hmm. I know there are some kids who don't like to write. Here, let me turn this around here. So in answer to that, there are definitely kids who don't like to write who I say, that's fine, don't write. But, um, but uh, you you can talk, right? Talk about what you're passionate about. And they're like, yeah, I can do that. Okay, so write some talking points out and then do a video instead of an actual written piece. And then when you're done talking, just translate that into, just type out what you said below it so you have both both a video blog and you have the written piece if somebody doesn't want to watch the video so um, you can it's a multi uh, media platform you can do um, audio just audio recordings um, and I don't want to we've already we've already wasted a perfectly good half hour um, <laughs> and I don't want to go too long but I want to make sure that you get Caesars uh, address here let's see okay so if you want to visit Caesars website to take a look at it it's Cesar Castro dash nths dot weebly dot com so for those of you out there who want to um, participate go to any one of these three and just drop a line to Avery Finn and Caesar and give them some um, some tips some advice um, any kind of positive feedback and Shri has a question if we wanted kids here to adopt this as a medium to chronicle their school life could you tell us how yes so um, you can definitely go on the the hundred dot org website and uh, look up blog portfolios we have a toolkit there to get you started and then if you have any additional questions you can contact me through that um, through the website and you can talk to, uh, we can connect you with other students if you have questions you want to talk to other students. There is another teacher who worked with me on that project named Andrew Biggs. He is also a uh, 100 ambassador. So we're here and available. We, we understand the role of what 100.org is trying to do and um, promoting really good practices that are innovative and wonderful out there in education around the globe and we are more than happy at any point to help you out if you want to try to implement this again we're still deepening our own practices but so far we've had some really amazing successes and i'm just happy happy to be plugged in to 100.org so um contact me there it's Lisa Gottfried at New Tech High, and um, I'm also on the Facebook group, so if you want to message me there or have any questions, you can always reach me that way. Um, what other ways do we want to ask these, do, these innovators around the world to help us in our process? Anything that you guys want to ask for? They're thinking. No. I'm just happy to share. So I'm going to let these guys rub us off here.
Wave goodbye. Thank you so much for taking half an hour out of your learning time today. And um, I hope that that's helpful for all you guys. Please just contact us if you need to. And I want to thank 100.org for putting us on the 100 innovators list last year and inviting us to the summit. I think um, I'm so excited to just share more and more and more of what we're doing here at New Tech High. And just hit us up. You can also go to newtechhigh.org if you have any questions about the um, training or about what we're doing here with PBL here in the United States. Thank you guys so much. Catch you on the flip side.